Students, what is the saddest thing you found out about your teacher? In sophomore year, I had a math teacher named Mr. Bick. He was famous at my school because of how short he was, which you didn't always realize until you stood up from your desk. Kids used to jokingly refer to him as Mr. Bick. He didn't assign too much work and he was a really nice guy, so most students liked him. However, some students took advantage of his kindness and would mess with him in class, as he seemed like an easy target. I was one of those kids, and one day we pushed him too far. He was my Algebra 2 teacher in my sophomore year. I was ahead in math, so the rest of my class were all juniors. I was very insecure at that time, as I hadn't quite hit puberty yet, and I desperately wanted the approval of the older kids in my class. The one thing I had going for me was that I was smart. Like really smart. But being good in school was not really that cool at the time, so I used my intellect for another purpose, to make fun of people. I couldn't always defend myself physically, so my defense mechanism I built up was an extraordinary ability to make people feel stupid and small using my words. I would study people and learn their insecurities, and store them away for if they ever crossed me or made me mad. For Mr. Bick, while he was obviously insecure about his height, I learned pretty early on that his biggest insecurity was control. He made kids raise their hands to go to the bathroom, was super strict about his assigned seating, and he never let students stand up without asking him first. He loved being in his classroom, because there, he was in control of the situation. So I decided to take that away from him. One day, me and the three guys at my table in class started humming. We hummed as low as we possibly could, which made it impossible for Mr. Bick to tell where it was coming from. At first, he laughed, and said, okay, very funny. Can whoever is doing that please stop so we can continue with the lesson. We stopped for a few minutes, but then we started up again. Now Mr. Bick was agitated. He whipped around, trying to catch the culprits, but he couldn't tell because we made sure to keep normal expressions as we hummed. Guys, this isn't funny anymore, whoever is humming needs to stop now. I could see his lip twitching, the urgency in his voice, and the look of insecurity in his eyes. It was working. Nothing made me feel better about myself than seeing someone else unravel right in front of me. He tried once again to return to teaching, but he could not ignore the low, buzzing sound of us humming. He turned around again, and this time hysterically screamed, just stop. Stop the humming. Whoever is humming just please stop. He had completely lost his composure, and you could see the signs of anxiety all over him. Heavy breathing, beads of visible sweat on his brow, and his entire body shaking a little. Then he looked up, and saw a room full of teenagers snickering under their breath, or covering their mouths. I think that sight was what broke him. In an instant, the layers of protection he had been building up his entire life were stripped away, and the parts of himself he hated the most were bare for everyone to see. Then he started crying. Why? Why doesn't anyone take me seriously? I was ridiculed my entire childhood, and I thought that if I returned as a teacher I would finally be respected. But now, as a fully grown man, I'm being laughed at by a bunch of teenagers. Why? Is this why I'm alone? Is this why they all leave? Why doesn't anyone respect me? Nobody was laughing anymore. He stood there quietly for what felt like an eternity, and then left, saying he had to go to the bathroom. He didn't come back for the rest of class, and the vice principal had to come in and take over. They told us some story about how he wasn't feeling well, but everyone had just seen what had happened. He came back after two days, and taught the class for the rest of the year, but he was different. He did the bare. Minimum, and I didn't see him smile a single time for the rest of the year. It was like he had just given up. He stopped caring if kids went to the bathroom without asking, or sat in the wrong spot, or stood up to walk around class. I had shattered his classroom paradise into little pieces, and he wasn't interested in putting the pieces back together. As for me, I wish I could say that this was a big turning point in my life, and I never did anything like that again, but I would be lying if I said it was. Sure, watching a grown man cry in front of me did make me feel guilty, but that feeling was wiped away the first time one of the older kids said, dude that humming thing with Mr. Bick was hilarious, I continued to walk around with hate in my heart, and hurt a lot of people who were close to me in the process. It didn't dawn on me until much later that I was worthy of love all by myself, and didn't need to put others down to feel big. Wherever you are, I'm sorry Mr. Bick.